What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the opinionated hippie, continuing and for a while wrapping up my deep dive into Grateful Dead Live 1978, the officially released stuff. Um, we have the closing of Winterland, um, released as a four CD set. It is the last show of uh, 1978, the New Year show. Literally, it starts in New Year's. Um, it is also the last show of the Winterland, I believe, their last show ever. They would shut down after this. Um, and for now, the last show I'm going to do from 78. There's a lot more stuff to do. Got a couple box sets of 78 stuff, but I'm um, going to take a break from 78. I'm going to jump into an early Brett Midland year. Uh, maybe do, I don't know, either 81 or 82, just to, just to like compare. Um, then move on to the 80s, then do a Wellnick, and then we'll get back to the 70s. Um, but... Um, yeah, so what we got here, one, I enjoy this release. I think this is a good release. But it is, I think, a typical sort of Grateful Dead big moment show in that they don't particularly bring what you expect them to bring, right? It's not a ferociously high-energy New Year show. It's not a ferociously high-energy let's blow the roof off this sucker before someone literally blows the roof off the sucker and makes way for whatever else is going to be after it's the Winterland. It's a show that sounds like it was played from midnight to 5 a.m., which is essentially what it was with breakfast at the end, um, at some random venue somewhere. I think it's got some great moments. It's at times I would call a sublime release, not the Garden Grove band from later on, uh, but, you know, like mellow, understated, um, kind of chill. Um, there are moments when things start to really percolate more than others, but I don't think there's ever really any moment where like chaos happens. The edges sometimes get frayed, but not really. Um, there's guest stars galore in this thing. Um, I believe uh, Dan Aykroyd does the countdown at midnight. Um, Bill Graham does a little thing, he announces, introduces the band at one point, which is like, we never get to hear that. Um, Cipollina, John Cipollina, drops in and plays some guitar. Um, much more effective than he was when he appeared earlier. Um, Ken Kesey plays Thunder during drums. Uh, we have two harmonica players. Matthew Kelly does some harmonica. Lee Oscar does some harmonica. He's coming back. Um, we also have Greg Erico sitting in on drums for a while. I'm pretty sure it's just during drums. Um, we got a dark star, the first one in years, four years, I think. Um, there's some nice things in here, but none of it I think is essential. None of it I think blows the roof off the mother. Um, but it kind of reminds me, if you know the first Dick's Picks, which was a Halloween 71 show. I think that was the first one, right? No, second one was Halloween 71. Uh, there's a really nice dark star on there that's pretty chill and pretty laid back. Not really spooky as far, far as Halloween goes, but it's one of my favorite dark stars. And this, I think, has that energy. There are moments here that are just so perfectly Jerry. Like, so perfectly just Jerry's going to play and do what Jerry does. And it works. Kind of, in a way, is like the template for what I think most of the 80s is like the sort of the, the 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 basement for the 80s where like, you know Jerry's just gonna bring it except when he's, you know, having drug issues and pre-coma issues. Um, but when he does, you know there's just gonna be a certain level of like satisfaction that's delivered. And I feel that's what this show is, but because it's so uniformly kind of chill and there are these neat moments that pop up, I really enjoy this show, but I can't say it's a barn burner. Four CDs. Uh, all of set one sits on the first disc. And I think the opening trifecta, the first three songs, are kind of what makes me ultimately love the show and kind of convinces me that the rest of it is really strong. Opens up with a sugar mag. Sugar mag should have opened way more shows. The ending jam, they're not trying to end a show. They're not trying to like exert all their energy. They're not trying to like go crazy. They just kind of jam it out. Um, there's no Sunshine Daydream. They drop that at the end of the set awkwardly. Um, it's just a well-paced, well-played, good dose of energy sugar mag. Phenomenal opener. Should open more shows. Then they go into a Scarlet Fire. Scarlet, once they get, you know, pretty solid Scarlet, 
um, once they get into the jam, they make room for like the, you know, the drummers to kind of just do their thing for a while. Um, and then once they kind of establish the rhythm, Jerry's just kind of off soloing and the band's following Jerry and Jerry's got some hot licks. The energy kind of percolates up a little, never gets too intense. We get a nice like five or six minutes of jamming. Eventually we make a transition into fire. Um, some really nice pre-vocal jamming in that. Some nice jamming throughout the song. Um, fire might be the highlight of the first set. I think the fire energy throughout it is probably the best thing in this set. Uh, really strong fire. Um, there are better fires in 77, probably better fires in 78, but there's nothing wrong with this one at all. And coming as the third song of the show, like I'm all in. Like these first three songs, we're talking, we got a good like 35 minutes of just everybody's in a good mood. Doesn't sound like New Year's energy, uh, but it does sound like it's after midnight and we're going to jam and we're going to chill and we're just going to play well. Um, really good, solid opening. I'm all in after this. Bob follows up with a Me and My Uncle Big River. Uh, Big River has some nice jamming before they get to the first vocals. It's not extensive, but it's maybe like a couple bars longer than they normally do. Gives the song a little more feeling. Bob's nailing the vocals. Uh, we get a Friend of the Devil. Um kind of establishing that this is a chill night. We're going to kind of be chill. Uh, Keith, fantastic solo in front of the devil, kind of stepping up. Uh, we get it. It's all over now. Good song choice. Well played. Good energy. Um, a stagger Lee, which is nowhere near as slow as that Egypt stagger Lee, which was like 19, X, Miss Eve, just really slow. This one's not that fast. It's more of a, it still feels a little slow, but it's solidly performed. Um, got a good vibe in it. I love Stagger Lee, so it's a good song to hear. Um, then they play From the Heart of Me, which is mm, not my favorite. Donna gets a chance to shine, good on them. But then that just kind of drops right into a sunshine daydream out of nowhere. And it just doesn't kind of really work. I think maybe if they had saved the Sunshine Daydream for like later in the show and dropped it like at the very end, that would have been maybe a little more epic. Um, nice Sunshine Daydream, Daydream to end. But really, the first set, it's all about those first three songs. It's just a fantastic opener. Then we get to the second set, uh, which is split onto uh, two discs, discs two and three. You get all the way, like the all the pre-drum stuff on disc two. You get the post-drum stuff on disc three. Um, drums is like 20 minutes long. And this is where all of our special guests come in. Um, Matthew Kelly's playing a harmonica on, a, on I Need a Miracle. Might be the standout of that, um, especially during like the middle solo. He gets a chunk to solo. Sounds fantastic. Nice and bluesy and kind of dirty. Um, Lee Oscar uh, plays harmonica on drums. Towards the second half of drums, he comes in. And the melody he's playing reminds me of like a, a 70s theme show. Like if Barney Miller had like a harmonica where it's like a cop show, but it's funny. That Like that's the, the vibe he's bringing. I really like it. Um, Cipollina's playing on Not Fade Away. Um, doesn't really feel like a jam as much as like, hey, Cipollina, now it's your turn to solo. Nice little tasty solo, something much different than Jerry. It's a good contrast. Uh, Lee Oscar also gets a harmonica solo. And then around and around, all three of them, Kelly, Oscar, and Cipollina are playing on around and around. Uh, you know, pretty good way to end the second set. Uh, but it opens up with a high energy Samson. We get a ramble on Rose. We get an I Need a Miracle. They jam out the I Need a Miracle at the end, but, or at the end of I Need a Miracle, it's got a nice jam and then they kind of reprise the vocals. It does feel like they want it to be bigger and better than it is. Like they keep pushing the jam and they keep pushing the energy and they keep like just not wrapping it up. Never really catches fire, never really hits that spark where we're like just taken off. Um, but there, you can feel the efforts there. And I do think Kelly, his harmonica playing on this really kind of uh, makes it a better version of Miracle. Uh, we get a Terrapin station after that. Uh, then we go into a playing in the band. Uh, relatively short playing in the band. I think it's like under 12 minutes. Um, it's like 13 minutes. Um, it feels like what my, just when I think of 80s playing, 
It just feels like that. They play the song, they get into the groove, they get into the spacey part, and Jerry's just gonna solo, band's gonna fill in around him. It's solid, the playing's excellent. Every once in a while we percolate into like higher energy, but never ever actually break free into anything crazy. Just like, you know, considering the song, the post songs, what we get maybe nine minutes of jamming, just really pure, the Grateful Dead, led by Jerry, exploring that playing in the band space. We don't go into anything else. We don't ever get too crazy. It's just really solid, comfortable playing. And at this point in the show, it's what, maybe, what is it? Maybe one thirty, maybe 2.30, 3 o'clock, maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. Perfect 3 o'clock in the morning playing in the band. Like you're just lost, you're in the haze. It's like, who knows what, you're, what your mind's going through. Solid playing in the band. Uh, those five songs are just two. Just three, we get drums, 20-minute drums. Um, Lee, I think uh, Lee Oscar's harmonica solo is probably the best. At some point, uh, we just get some loud booms that I think are played by, uh, what's his name? Ken Kesey. Um, that goes into a not fade away that just never really ignites. There were moments, but it almost seems like for the entire duration of it, the 20 minutes, it's the drummers are just like doom, 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 doom. Like we never really get away from that rhythmic pattern. So we're never really like lost and have to find our way back, which I think the best not fadeaways do. Um, and it really seems like once we get into the jam, like the instrumental section, it's like, okay, Cipollina, drop a solo. Okay, Oscar, drop a solo. It's not like they're interwoven with Jerry and they're really like feeding off each other. Um, there are moments but I think overall, it's another instance where like, you guys are just trying too hard to make this a special moment. And it just doesn't have that, that not fade away epicness that they were hitting, you know, in 77, 76. Um, interesting, but it just, I don't know, it's lacking something. I enjoy it. I like to just, you know, get into that rhythm, but Something's missing. And then we get a really nice, strong around and around to close. It also feels a little like slower than normal, but it's it still got some good energy. Disc four is the entirety of the third set. And I really, really like this disc. Uh, opens up with a dark star. And that goes into the other one. And then that goes into a dark star. It's a one verse dark star, though Jerry does kind of play the melody of the second verse on his guitar once we reprise it. Uh, one verse, other one. Uh, the entire thing together is probably like 16, 17 minutes long. Nowhere near epic. Nowhere near like, if you're at this show in 78 and they play Dark Star for the first time in four years, you're probably going, okay, well, that was cool to hear, but it's not, my mind is not blown because, you know, it's not what they were doing in like the first half of the 70s. But I really like this Dark Star. It's just Jerry, like it's all the pre, all the, almost all the pre-vocal stuff. Jerry just out there exploring in dark star Terry once again, territory once again. He sounds comfortable. He sounds happy. He sounds energized. He's not breaking any envelopes or breaking down walls. He's just having a good dark star time. Kind of chill, but also psych and deep and squirrely and what you want out of a dark star. Get the first verse. Kind of falls apart after that. Um, we have moments of inspiration. It starts to get kind of frayed at the edges for a while as we work our way into the other one, um, kind of looking for direction. Uh, we eventually find ourselves in other one territory. We get a nice fill, boom, bass drop. Then we're off into a really good jamming pre-vocals. Like the pre-vocal jamming is fantastic. Um, and really, all of Dark Star through the, the main verse of the other one is probably the after the fire on the mountain, the highlight of the show, just it's got its its darkest energy, its most psych energy. The the edges are frayed a little bit. Um, feels like maybe chaos might ensue. It never does. Um, but then after we get the verse, we kind of wander around before we end up in dark star territory. Jerry plays the melody on guitar. Um, then we kind of wrap things up and we go into Warfrat. Warfrat isn't my favorite moment. I'm going to give that to Fire, Dark Star, other one. But it might be the best played song on here only because they know what to do, right? They know how to bring a war frat. And the weird energy of the Dark Star, other one, that kind of frayed, when 
it, you can see the rough edges, but we're not going to indulge in them. Those work really well for Warfrat. It works well for the st story, works well for Jerry's vocals, works well for the solo. It just kind of all clicks in the Warfrat, as I am finding Warfrats usually do. They take that weird energy that maybe the band doesn't know what to do with, and they just focus it in this this awesome story, this awesome tale. And Jerry knows how to harness that energy in a guitar solo. Warfrat works for me. That goes into a St. Stephen. Always fun to hear. I'm here for the St. Stephen. We're going in a good direction. This has been a fantastic set. No complaints. Maybe things could be longer and crazier, but I'm happy. Then we get a 14-minute good loving. And you can tell they're just trying to make this one go longer. You can tell that they're like, hey, close in the Winterland. Let's indulge. Let's let Bob go crazy. Let's, it's, it's, it's like 10 minutes too long, right? Can they get through this in like three and a half? It's not for me. I don't like this. Never been a fan of good love. And even when it's back in the pig pen days, this to me, yeah, I'm not having it. Um, just when they immediately, when they, after St. Stephen's done, and it's like, do, 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 I'm like, ugh. And then they just keep playing and playing and playing, and it goes on. And I don't think the jams are that epic. So we get that. Uh, encore, a really subdued Casey Jones that almost sounds like it might be in like, it's just subdued. It's surprisingly subdued. Yeah, it's like five in the morning at this point, so they're exhausted. You can almost hear the exhaustion. That goes into a pretty good Johnny Be Good. And then finally is your final encore. Perfect song to choose. Wrap up an era. Wrap up, start a new year. And we bid you good night. Good night. Good night. And that's the show. Uh, there is a bonus disc that is material from other New Year shows. I do not have that bonus disc. Um, so don't know, haven't heard it, but it's got an easy wind. It's got a jam into Black Peter from early 70s, a playing in the band, an 18 minute playing in the band from 72, a lazy light and supplication from 77, um, plus a sugar mag, Scarlet Fire, also from 77. I haven't heard these versions, or at least in the context of this disc, so not going to comment on those. And I'm not sure you can get it anymore anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I like this release. I, I, I think it would probably even rank higher if it wasn't a New Year show or closing a Winterland, because I, I do think being an epic, it should be an epic moment. I think the song choices kind of lean to that epicness, but I don't think they're, I think they're just, again, they always seem overwhelmed by the moment and they just kind of seem to underplay it. But the underplaying works. And how many years later are we? Uh, 46 years later. I enjoy this release. I like these songs. Um, but yeah. That's a lot to say. I'm rambling. Where would I rank this among all the other 78s? I have it in number two. It's not going to compare with that Dick's Picks because that Dick's Picks is a compilation of several shows and the stuff on that. Like the music never stopped alone on that. I think it's like makes that a, a must hear. One of my favorite musics. Um, tsk, the energy is ridiculous. Um, but I think it's a solid number two. Um, and I really think it's that opening trifecta, trifecta of Sugar Mag, Scarlet Fire, just the vibe, the kind of laid back chill that's just play. And I really like that Dark Star um, other one part with the Warf Rat and the St. Stephen. So, um, and there's other stuff is good, but that I think that's the highlights. So yeah, so that's what I got. Those are my thoughts on the closing of Winterland, Grateful Dead, my last 78 review for a while. Take a break from 78 come back in a couple months but i'm gonna hit some early 80s stuff next so if you have a preference about year i haven't decided whether i want to do 80 81 or 82 i don't think i'm gonna do 83 or 84 there's not a lot of stuff out there but those early three have a little more releases out there so if you have a preference drop it in the comments and if somebody if there's an overwhelming year favorite i'll go there but anyways that's all i got for now thanks for watching subscribe like share comment do those things let me know your thoughts on the show and uh, yeah, peace. Talk to you later.